Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Channel 781 News Waltham City Council Debrief. This week in the City Council, um, there was a public hearing. Verizon was asking for a special permit to install antennas and equipment on 2nd Street um, near Route 95. Um, the mayor asked for acceptance of a state green community grant um, having to do with LED lighting. The Ritzy Award Committee recommended giving the award to Justin Barrett. A group of counselors led by Councillor Paz um, put forth a resolution having to do with bike sharing. And President McMenamin appointed a committee to spend the cable access funds um, that were allocated at the last meeting. Um, so we'll be talking about all of those things. I'm here with James Krikelis. Hello, everyone. Hey, Chris Gamble. Hello. And uh, before we move on, so we don't have a school committee update this week because school committee did not meet last week because of the holiday that would be meeting um, tomorrow as we record this. So depending when you're watching it, they'll be meeting Wednesday evening. Um, so you can catch the school committee if you're interested. And we also want to continue with our, uh, our new tradition of sharing some community events coming up with you. This weekend, Saturday the 30th, there's an arts fair. Um, sponsored by Cat Connection. We don't know much detail on it, but it, it sounds like fun. Um, this Sunday, May 1st is May Day, which we told you about last week. That will be a really cool event with Waltham Democratic Socialists of America, Brandeis Leftist Union, Waltham Food Not Bombs, and Grouches of Waltham. Am I forgetting anyone? All co-sponsors sponsoring Waltham's first ever public celebration, as far as we know, of International Workers' Day. And then the next weekend, the Steampunk Fair is on May 7th. And um, as Chris mentioned last week, um, the second ever Waltham LGBTQ plus Pride will take place on June 4th on the Common, the first time we're ever doing it on the Common. Um, the organizing committee is looking for your ideas on activities to have there, musicians try to book there. We're looking for volunteers and we're looking for sponsors. So feel free to get in touch with Chris or I about any of those things, because both of I both of us are part of the organizing committee, um, but we're hoping to have a really awesome pride this year that's very visible and really includes the full community. Um, and so that is our community events and moving on to uh, this week in the city council. First, we'll talk about um, the uh, hearing for Verizon. James, can you tell us more about that? Uh, yeah, so this was the uh, first public hearing for the special permit for doing this install. And it's not like there's any like, it's not like a construction project or anything like that. They're just going to the top of the Marriott, I believe building and adding another antenna to there. And there was a, a number of questions from counselors and they uh, ended up having a decent presentation with the uh, engineer from Verizon. So he, I think he was from Verizon. So he'll, uh explaining that the reason that they were doing this is because it's not like there isn't coverage but it's during peak hours there's a uh will be difficulty connecting when there's a lot of people already connecting and i mean this covers basically the highway and everything the, the thing that they're addressing is the highway and things east of the highway basically and they he explained that they currently have antennas directed because they're directional east, south, or sorry, north, south, and west, but not east. And he had a map showing the lack of pr projected coverage in that region. And that was sort of the reason given, and this is sent to committee. So we'll be talking about this again next week. Thanks. Anything to add to that, Chris? Um, I mean, it's, it's good that the city doesn't really have to pay for more Wi-Fi in the city. Um, I did want to bring up uh, one comment that was made by uh, my friend Colleen Bradley MacArthur, happy belated birthday, by the way, and I'm sorry, I'm, uh, a little bit of criticism here. Um, so she brought up a question during that, that a constituent had reached out to her uh, with, um, and she asked the Verizon representative about the possible health concerns over 5G. And as soon as they said that, I was like, I like cringed physically. Um, so, I mean, I can, I'm not going to tell anyone how to govern, you can govern however you want, you're an elected official, you did it, and you can just do whatever you want for two years, 
uh, and Colleen's doing a great job, but it is not true and it will never be true that when government officials say they want to represent everyone. That's impossible. Uh, it, it, it could be true if they say they want to represent most people. Um, but, you know, counselors get emails from every type of person. They get uh, emails from kind people, from not smart people, and they get emails from dangerous people too. Uh, you choose who you want to reach out to, who you reply to, and whose concerns you want to bring up on the public floor. Um, and uh, personally, I would not have brought up the concerns of someone complaining about the possible health risks of 5G, which is a conspiracy theory stemming from QAnon. So I just, it's just not a good look for me. Okay. To be clear, she did say that this was from a constituent. It wasn't her idea to ask, but I, I, I hear what you're saying. That maybe that maybe that's not always a good enough reason. Any comment on that, James? It, it is good to clarify that there's no health risks posed by things like this. But yeah, it, it's definitely not good to be elevating like wild speculation to the level of public discourse either. Thank you. So moving on, the mayor asked for acceptance of a grant from the state of Green Communities grant. This was sent to committee, so it was a very brief part of the meeting, but there's some interesting background here. Can you give us some of the interesting background, Chris? So yeah, this is a uh, anecdote that I've never shared publicly uh, ever, um, but uh, so the community grants, uh, the competitive green grant that we got is for $200,000 to replace a lot of the lighting in municipal buildings with, um, with LED bulbs, which are just way more, vastly more uh, energy efficient. Um, and it's kind of sad that the city of Waltham hasn't done this already. Um, and, but I know that they haven't done this uh, because in 2018, it be, I became aware that uh, if you go to the city council, you'll see all these green lamps that everyone has, and they can turn on the lamps. Every councilor has one. And it became, it be, uh, I became aware that they were using old, just uh, standard light bulbs. I don't even know what they're fucking called. Um, but so uh, in 2018, I'm going to share my screen. Um, I went to the council during the day, and I switched out every single light bulb with an LED light bulb. And so now every time they turn on their lamps, that is an LED light bulb that I put in there in 2018. So every time someone turns on their lamp, it's like, that's energy efficiency from uh, for me personally. So you're welcome. I didn't, I didn't need a $200,000 grant to do it. <laughs> um, when did you do this, Chris? 2018, is there uh, any, specifically um, December. There, there any, um... What's the word? When a lot you can't get charged with a crime after. Oh no, no, that. no! There was no. no I mean, that's, no, that's no gorilla, that. a gorilla light bulbing. <laughs> yeah, gorilla light bulbing. Um, I would like that to say, as a slippery slope. What if I, anybody just put anything in any light bulb side? Yeah, that's a slippery slope. Um, I would like to say that Randy LeBlanc already had an LED light bulb, and Christine Mackin had whatever light bulb is between like a standard one and an LED one, I forget, I don't know. To, I don't it's know. incandescent light bulb, Incand compact yeah. fluorescent and LED. And the compact fluorescents are the spiral ones with the two. Like, I think it was a compact spiral. Yeah. All right, thank you. So moving on the Ritzy Award Committee recommended in the Ritzy Award to Justin Barrett. Um, Justin Barrett, someone who has been very involved in the Waltham community for a long time. Um, I'm going to try to summarize his current roles, and I apologize if I make any mistakes, but he's president of the Middlesex Human Services, um, which owns and operates the um, shelters as well as many of the other services for unhoused people in Waltham. Um, he's on the Conservation Committee, he's on the Board of Survey and Planning, and he is the chair of the Community Preservation Committee, which means he plays a big role in determining how CPC funds are spent. He's also the chair of the board of WCAC. And I believe he is or was the president of the Lions Club Charitable Foundation. Um, and they're the ones who put on certain events for charity around Waltham, including the light show at the Fernald. Um, so that's who he is. Chris, did you have anything to add about the, the process here? Um, so yeah, uh, just a bit more background is that the Kevin and Ritzy Award is for public service. Anyone, it's uh, the, the city council elects a committee and then that committee 
takes applications from the public uh, and then they chat about it and then they agree on a person that has done great public service for Waltham in that year or throughout the you know their lifetime. Um, and so they've been giving this out for a few years now. Um, and so uh, you know, I've always been interested in the city council, but um, just with doing this show, I was focusing more on this committee, the, the recognition committee, because um, I wanted to be able to talk about it on the show. So I've been paying close attention. The thing is, they whenever they met, they never actually talked about any of the committee things. And so I was very surprised when... Uh, I was looking at the agenda for this meeting and it said that they were awarding it to Justin Barrett. Um, so quickly, Justin Barrett, very safe bet. He does a lot of things in Waltham. Um, not particularly enthusiastic about it. He, you know, he leads a lot of things to their conclusion, which is a great uh, thing uh, to have. You know, he does that on the CPC, he does that with MHSA. Uh, say very safe person to give it to. He does a lot of things in Waltham. Um, so I'm not saying he's not wor worthwhile. The thing is, that, and I'll share my screen again. So I was at the committee meetings uh, two weeks ago. Um, and so I was at economic community development um, at seven o'clock and I had to leave at 7.30. Um, and so at 7.30, I got up and left. Economic community development was still meeting. And then, and then apparently the Kevin M. Ritzy committee met, but I don't freaking see it on this agenda. And committee the whole meets at eight. So they must have met like at 745, but with no, no public acknowledgement that their community was meeting, which is required. And so that was the only time they talked about any of the candidates and it went, went unrecorded and those meeting minutes will never be available. I'm gonna say that right now. Uh, and so, so, you know, I'm just a little annoyed at the process. It's not transparent. And I would like to call out the city every single time they mess up on something like this. And I'm very annoyed that that committee was not broadcasted publicly. And then for the record, they do put that committee on these agendas. Uh, they have done that in the past. And so they should do it now. So I'm annoyed at that. Yeah, uh, but also yeah. congratulations, Justin Barrett. They were on the agenda so two weeks back, I believe or two weeks before that meeting. Yeah, yeah, no, and I went to that meeting and I recorded it and they said they got a bunch of applications and they would meet again and they would talk about it. And that was the entire meeting. Interesting. So uh, yeah, maybe disturbing lack of transparency on that, especially considering how far we have come on the issue of recording meetings. Um, moving on, so there was a resolution um, put forward by a group of counselors. I believe uh, Paz, Councillor Paz was the primary person on it because he was the first one to speak on it. Um, I think this was a late file. We don't actually have um, the text of it, uh, but James, could you tell us a little bit more about that? This was a resolution put forward basically like to, to, uh, to, to list like Waltham as like a, a, a a client community or like a compliant community with other communities that have also signed similar agreements for bike share programs so that when they are set up that the people can operate them across the city lines and, and we'll have ideally multiple stations in neighboring cities that you can pass through um and this had i think broader support than the last time i saw that something like this come through and uh joey Laca or councillor lacava mentioned that the because more communities around Waltham that are connected to Boston have adopted similar agreements that he felt more comfortable going ahead with this for this one as well. Anything to add, Chris? I mean, uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm always excited uh, at the prospect of more people riding bicycles. I think Waltham is one of the most unfriendly, bike unfriendly places I've ever lived in as someone who only rides bikes uh, for a mode of transportation. I think the infrastructure is unfriendly. I think the population of Waltham is unfriendly to bicyclists. It's just, which is all around not a good time riding my bike uh, around Waltham. And uh, I think they should focus on bike infrastructure uh, as well as obtaining bikes. I will say like uh, at one point years ago now working in Waltham, I had at one point, at least three members of my team that were all biking into work got into accidents biking into work in like the same six month stretch of time and it's just, there's definitely like 
it, it's not as safe as it could be out there for bikes. I find I find myself when I'm out there. Um, it, it's good that we are putting resolutions to at least make that more prominent. But I think that there, yeah. there, there's something more to be done. Yeah, I mean, what comes first, chicken or egg? Maybe when more people bike, to help make it more bike infrastructure. Uh, but I mean, you don't even have to go very far. I was just in Somerville. The bike lanes in Somerville, oh, so awesome! Totally separated from the road. Amazing. It's not even that far away. How come we can't have something like that? Last year, George Darcy brought in a resolution to try and make a bike lane adjacent to the road, separated from the road for Lexington Street, which would be amazing because I hate biking on that road. Uh, but it's a massive project requiring eminent domain of a couple of spaces. Um, and so I don't know if that'll ever come to fruition, but uh, relevant to the docket. Okay, and our last issue is so President McMenamin appointed a committee to determine how to spend the funds that were appropriated by the mayor out of a cable access fund. Can you tell us more about that, Chris? So yeah, this is the continuing saga of the recording of the meetings. Uh, last week, we got mayoral support for that, and we got the funds to both fund the project and fund any related expenses to the project. It was a very large amount of money. It was $40,000 in two different communications. And on this debrief, we went back and forth on how would this money be distributed? And uh, I just wanna go on the record to say we were right in the fact that it was confusing uh, over how that money was gonna be spent because uh, President McMiniman is developing an entirely new committee just to oversee how that money is going to be spent. So it, we were right in the sense that there was no real uh, mode to distribute those funds. So uh, right again. So I guess the big question is, I was under the impression that the recording and captioning of the additional city council committee meetings was a done deal. Is it a done deal or do we have to wait for this committee to meet and decide to spend some portion of the money on that? James, do you have an answer? Oh, my, my understanding was that they, they are moving ahead with it, as is the mayor was setting up this committee so that for future requests, they didn't have to then ask the mayor to sign off on like a $10,000 check or something, or like request a $10,000 check from, from the city council. Instead, whatever requests come in from, which are like from WCAC can then just get directed to that committee and then disperse the money and then not have to involve asking the mayor's office first. Okay, that's good. Was that your understanding too, Chris? Yeah, I think this is a done deal. Everyone is in support. Uh, you know, they're even they were hiring people to record it before the money was even there. Um, so it's just a matter of time. And and as I said before on this debrief, I have no idea when that's going to start because uh, these things can take forever or they can take a short amount of time. So I'm not going to even put a guess on when that's going to start. But it will. It'll happen. Great. So that's good news. Anything else I'm missing before we sign off for tonight? Thanks a lot. We will be back next week. Oh, Chris, do you have something? No? Nope? OK, thanks a lot. We will be back next week with the City Council committee meetings. And we'll hopefully see many of you this weekend at May Day. Um, and uh, thanks a lot. Talk to you. Have a good night. Bye, everyone.